Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. And uh, we're here with Mark Spencer. And we're going to make some triangles and points on a... I don't know, what are we driving? <laughs> have a good intro. Just you're gonna do something esoteric with a bunch of balls and lines. I'm gonna do something. I, so here's here's the inspiration for this is the uh, the Apple Developers Conference that happened a little while ago. You know, in the summer in San Francisco, opened up with this beautiful motion graphics piece about design about design that was black and white. It made me cry. It was well, so beautiful. It was pretty good. It was nice. Yeah, yeah you, you saw it. And if you haven't seen it, you should just go to the Apple's website or just Google Apple Developer Conference. Uh, intro video or video, and you'll see it. I, I can't show it here because it's it says it's, it's all copyright. copyrighted everything. We're lo yeah. our team of lawyers will. Yeah. Visit so you. so yes. anyway, check it out. It's yeah. it's much better than what I'm going to show you here. But I was inspired by that to make this thing, which um, really challenged what I think you can do in motion. But it sort of because that thing was not done in motion. You see, it's a beautiful motion graphics piece. So it was not done in motion. The things that are done in there can't can't really be done in motion. But uh, here's mm. so this is what I do want to do is I want to create this and show how this is created, where basically the idea is I have these, these three balls that can be any object attached by these strings that stretch as they move around, okay? And the basic idea can be provided, applied to any number of points, just two points or many points. That thing can be a solid instead of an outline figure, or anything you want, to do some kind of interesting things. And the reason, part of the reason I want to show it, one thing I just think it's cool, but there's also a bunch of gotchas that if you try to do this on your own, um, I'm gonna, if, Don't try I, this at I, home. Yeah, yeah I, I will save you hours. I will save you hours of pain uh, on, if you want to do something like this because I went through these hours of pain. So this is harder than the spirograph? Um, it, harder than yeah. the sketch? Well, once, <laughs> once you do it, once you know right. how to do it, it's easy. So I'm just going to cut to the easy way. Okay. So here's the basic idea is I'm going to make the triangle using a shape object. I'm going to use the Bezier tool down here and I'm just going to click, click, click and close it off and there's my triangle. Escape. Uh, F7 for the heads-up display, and I'm going to turn off the fill, turn out the outline, and give it some, not some roundness, just some width. Not that much, maybe about like that, okay? Uh, Shift-S for my bet, get out of that tool. So I got a little triangle. So here's the key part, uh, the first key part about this is you cannot use another shape. You know, this is a shape object right here, this little bezier shape, and you think oh, I'll just draw a circle. You can see and draw a circle out. I'm holding the shift key down, but I'm going to undo that because that won't work for what we're about to do here. You can track shapes to other shapes, but it won't allow us to do what we're going to do here. Well, which is like move and then stretch. Have them the stay connected yeah. in the way that we want them right. to, basically. So what I'm doing is I'm going to, you can use any imported graphic, but I'm going to use Motion's library in the content folder in particle images. There's a particle image called a dot here. It's just a PNG file, similar to transparency. And I'm going to throw it in here and place it over this top point. I'm not going to try to be perfect here. Option drag to make another one. So the key one. is this is not a shape, this is just an image is all It's it an is. image. You can tell in yep. the uh, layers tab right. there, it's, it's so just I'm an image, right? reinforcing what you said. This is... Yes. So left, I'm just going to rename these because we're going to want to know what they are. L for left, R for right, and let's do uh, T for top. So those are the three points that we want to attach to this shape. And the way we're going to attach them is use a behavior called track points. So we go to behaviors and we go down to shapes. Uh, there's all these different shape behaviors, which we talk about them in some of our tutorials and some other MacBreak studios. But I want to focus on this one called track points. Okay, that's the key thing. This is another one of those, what does that do? Yeah, behaviors. yeah, what does that do? And it's kind of like a match move, but you can track individual points. That's the cool thing about it. So I'm going to apply it here, and then I'm going to name it uh, track points T, because it's going to track the top. Now, F2 to go to the behavior inspector, and there's a little well here. So I want to track the top. If I drag the top in, it immediately says, OK, I'll track to that. But by the way, look down here. It's tracking all three. See in the inspector, I've got little plus singles. It's tracking. Uh, Is this one of the gotchas? No. No, not right. really. This okay. is something you need to notice. By default, it's going to track all three points to that shape. So if I were to take this top here and move it, uh, nothing's going to actually happen right now because it, it just doesn't understand what to do. There's a couple things actually going on here. Let's. I need to go to attach to source, okay? So now if I took the top and moved it, um, it's going to move all everything, okay? It's tracking all three points to that. That's not what I want. So what I want to do here is turn off the ones that aren't applicable. So I'll see that's the top one. So I'll uncheck those two. So now we only have one red tracker. 
Okay? So now if I choose this guy and move him, you know, he's attached. Nice. Okay? Now you think, oh, great, I'm done. So let's do some animation. So let's move the playhead forward and turn on recording and drag this guy. What? What's going on? You know, let's turn off recording. Let's play it back. Doesn't work. Okay? Now I'll undo that. We noticed if I just drag, let me move back to the beginning, it moves with it. But if you try to animate the position, it won't track. So that's the second gotcha, okay? Right. Like, what the heck? Okay, so the, the, to rewind, the first gotcha is you can't use a shape, you have to use an image. Second gotcha is... To track to you, the you shape. Can, right. Yeah, and then, and exactly. And the second gotcha is... Is the, the second gotcha is um, you can tr you can track an object to the shape, but you, as soon as you try to animate it, it just goes yeah. off the rails. So another way to say that is animating position of this circle image will not... Uh, cause the shape to track to it. Okay. But animating scale or rotation will. Okay, okay? I know, right. it sounds really weird. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rotate this thing, okay? And the way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go to Properties, Rotation, I'm gonna right click and choose Parameter Behavior, Rate. And then I'm gonna crank it up, let's crank it up to like three, okay? So if I play, uh, it's rotating but you know, it's not going anywhere. So I really need it to move. So what I'm going to do is right click on it and choose the anchor point tool and move its anchor point uh, maybe down and over a little bit. So it has a place to go, okay? So I play now, that <laughs> circle's going somewhere, but the, the it's lines not tracking. Are not tracking. Yeah, it's not tracking. Yeah, so the, the third thing here to know is even though attached to source is what we needed to change it to, to drag it by hand, in this case, we actually have to go to mimic source and uh, we're not quite done yet. Let me move it. I need to move it over a little bit. The good news is once we get this done, we're done. The last, <laughs> <laughs> the last thing we need to do is we need to analyze. Because if I play right now, it's still not going to work. It See? has to analyze that point. It has to analyze to oh, um, right. figure out what's happening. So it's going through and, you know, I'm playing the project. I actually hit analyze, which plays the project through and tracks it. What's cool about this, though, is once it's done, I can make changes and you don't have to analyze again. Okay, right. once the analysis, analysis is done, it's done. So that's done. So if I play now, it tracks to that guy, okay? But I can always go, I can stop playback and go to the beginning and say, you know what, I want to select that top guy and change, you know, change where this is, change where its anchor point is, or change the speed. So the rate is three now, maybe I'll rate two. And now if I play, it'll, um, it'll still track, it'll still respect it. Right. Okay? So that's the basic idea. Now, I am going to go ahead and do the other two because, it's a, again, what I found is even though you think you've got it, you keep going, it, it's a little bit tricky. So the thing that I recommend is don't duplicate things because normally it's, oh, I'll just duplicate that to keep going. Don't do it. All right? Apply it fresh every time. So I'm going to add behavior, shape, track points, and I'm going to call this track um, left for the left one. Drag the left in here. And then we have to figure out which one is the, that bottom left-hand corner. So it's not that one. It's not there. We got the right one. And then I'm going to, it's mimic source is right, analyze. And even though I haven't animated it yet, I can still analyze. Right. Okay. Even though I haven't done any animation on now that. Now let me see. You're going to change the anchor point to move it off. Yeah. Yeah. To have it, to hopefully, and then apply. Now what I can do is copy that rate behavior. So that's okay That with that. I just wouldn't copy, I wouldn't duplicate the, um, the track point. So I'm going to take this guy, rate. I'm going to option drag it to the left guy. I'll select the left guy and move its anchor point off. And also change the rate here maybe to negative uh, 2.5, just some different value. And if everything works correctly, that should, hey, okay, so now they're both going. Okay, That's but they're going in different directions with different rates, so it creates kind of an interesting look. So let's just see if we can get the last one to work, um, to get, <laughs> see if we can actually make this work all the way. So I'm going to go play it to the back to the beginning, behavior, shape, track points, and we'll call this track points R. We'll throw in R, and then we go down to these check boxes. In this case, it's this middle one is the right-hand one. I just want that right hand to be there. I'm going to track it. Analyze. Uh, and then you can throw the motion on first and then analyze. It doesn't matter the order that you do that. I'm just hitting analyze first because I happen to be in there. And let it finish. It goes pretty quick. It's 10 seconds. It needs to go through and analyze. It doesn't take too long to get that done. And then once that's done, 
There we go. Let's go back to the beginning. Uh, let's option drag this rate behavior onto this guy and change it again, let's say minus one, and also change its anchor point. I still have the anchor point tool active, so I'll move that, say, over here. I don't know. You can drag those anywhere, obviously. Uh, and then there we've got each of those animating separately. And each of them's tracking their own vertex. Right. So that's a base, the other one's colored differently, it's just different background, but that's that's exactly what I did to make the other one. So this is what keeps Mark up very late at night. <laughs> <laughs> so I, he did it in probably, I, you know, I'm guessing around eight minutes or so, but he put in some serious like. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of little tricks to get that uh -huh. to work out. But once you've got the idea, and this is really more of an inspirational thing here that maybe it triggers your mind to think about other ways, other things you can do with this. Because for example, these balls don't have to be here. You could turn those off just to have them driving the motion. Um, if I could click on things correctly, you know, the triangle is just animating without them. I, I like it better with them, but there's all kind of interesting things you could think to do with uh, with this, and it'll work in 3D space as well. I, I won't go through that here, because I don't have it moving in 3D space, but you could have those rotate in 3D space and track to the camera and do some really interesting things uh, in 3D space as well to have this move around in 3D space. So I'll just leave that as an idea for folks who want to kind of take this to the next level. Well, like, like a replicator, you have that, like that 3D checkbox that you can do and you can put it in. Yeah, you'd make each of these face the camera so, right. they, so they stay looking around. So, um, so hopefully that's interesting yeah. to some folks here. I, I think it's kind of a neat thing and a, a neat use of the track points behavior. So the, we'll put this one under things. What does that one do? Well, we now know what the track <laughs> points does. And yeah. uh, so you want to learn more about motion, check out rippletraining.com. We have a whole series of motion tutorials where you can uh, start from the ground up and learn more advanced features. And uh, pretty soon you'll be you know, designing your own track point stuff. So uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.